This morning the text we'll be going through is uh, Philippians 3, and we'll be going through uh, 3 through 20. Okay, so I'll try to get you out here before 1 o'clock. So, um, but the, the song that Serge just sang, I, I asked him specifically to sing that because we're going to be talking about identity today um, and what defines you. Um, just, just being in the ministry, um, whenever I go to a family function, anywhere that requires prayer, um, I'm the person that's going to get to pray. Um, I think they just, you're in the ministry, so obviously you, you have to know how to pray, so that's you. Um, I talked to um, my, my sister-in-law at the, at the funeral, um, and she's a nurse, and she's talking about how uh, she, she knows when certain people call her that they have a question about nursing, so she decides whether or not she has the time to answer that call. Um, and we were just talking about no matter what you do in life, if you have some kind of specialty, whether it be nursing or a plumber or a mechanic, you're the person somebody's going to call when they need help. Um, but we have all these things in our life that define us. Um, so the question that we're going into this uh, with is what defines you? Um, are you a student? Um, are you a teacher? A daughter? A son? A mother? A dad? An athlete? Um, a geek? I fall into that one. Um, a boss? Are you happy? Depressed? Uh, any other moniker that sums up who you are? Um, how, many of you, how many of you have ever been to a house of mirrors at a carnival? Okay. So a few of you. Okay. So you go into a house of mirrors and there's literally mirrors everywhere. Um, so life's a lot like that, except for all the reflections we see are something different. Um, we often look at our our physical realities to define us. Um, but we fail to realize that it's our spiritual reality that determines who we are. So grads, you are entering into a unique time in your life. Um, for the most part, this will never really happen again. Um, but you're likely headed into a completely unknown environment. Um, for the last 12 years of your lives, you've been surrounded by all your fellow students um, and they have decided what you are. Um, but you get to go into a situation where the majority of people, they have no idea who you are. They haven't formed their opinion of you yet. Um, you're going to have the opportunity to decide who you are. Um, and you're going to have the opportunity to display that. So our first point um, is what defines us. So this is going to come through uh, Philippians 3, verses 3 through 6. So I'm going to kind of go through the text here, um, and I'll, I'll take breaks and pause and just kind of break it down. Um, so verse 3 says, for we are the circumcision. So Paul's intentionally using the term circumcision as the idea of being both spiritual and physical. I mean, he's doing that because the Jews at this point get so caught up on physical circumcision. Um, and Paul's making a point to say there's a difference between spiritual and physical circumcision. So, continue on. The ones who serve by the Spirit of God boast in Christ Jesus and do not put confidence in the flesh. Although I once also had confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he has grounds for conf confidence in the flesh, I have more. So Einstein... You're going to wonder why I'm quoting Einstein. Said that everybody is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life believing it's stupid. So what does that have anything to do with God or our identity? It has everything to do with it. Um, we allow the people around us to have such a strong influence over our life that they decide who we are. They create our self-image. Um, because we believe what they say about us. But the problem is this. Man was created in the image of God. And we were created in God's image for his purpose. So God is the only one that has the ability to identify what our image is in Christ. But instead we cling to things that we can boast in. And that's what Paul's doing here. Okay, So he goes on to say that he has more to boast than any of them. Okay? So starting there in verse 4. 
circumcised the eighth day. Okay? So he's saying, I kept the Jewish law um, because I'm a Jew. I'm not a Gentile. Um, back to the, the Jews making such a strong case for you have to have physical circumcision. Okay? I'm a Jew, not a Gentile. Of the nation of Israel, once again, I'm Jewish. Of the tribe of Benjamin, said I'm not adopted into this nation, but I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, an enviable, an enviable proclamation. A Hebrew, born of Hebrews, um, not only a Jew, I know our language, I keep our traditions, not only does this apply to me, but it applied to my parents. Um, we haven't conformed to the ways of our oppressors. All right, so we're, we're not Hellenists. We're not adopting all these things that the Greeks bring in. Um, the last few claims that Paul's made, um, he's laying out his pedigree, right? Um, he's saying that this is what I am, and this is what gives me ability to say what I'm going to say. But he goes on. So regarding the law, a Pharisee. Okay, so he's saying that I am a student of the law. Um, Paul graduated, or not graduated, um, Paul studied under, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, but uh, Gamaliel, okay, so of the day, he is the man you want to study under, right? So if you want to learn about computers, you talk to Bill Gates, right? So if you want to learn about the law, this is who you talk to, this is the guy. So Paul graduated from like the equivalent of Harvard Law School, right? So it's where everybody wants to go. Um, regarding zeal, persecuting the church. So he's saying, I didn't just stand around and let these people blaspheme. I did something. I had permission from the high council to hunt them down. Regarding the righteousness that is in the law, blameless. He's not saying he didn't sin, um, but he's saying, I kept the law. Um, but it's interesting to see how throughout the epistles, Paul's attitude kind of changes. Um, I mean, he's making a point here. Um, but Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, he, he upheld strict, a strict standard of self-righteousness and hypocrisy that you see throughout Scripture every time Jesus is talking about the Pharisees. This is who Paul is saying he was, right? Um, so Paul's establishing that he is Jewish. It's not that he stopped and found something better, but that he found the correct way. Everything that they were waiting for, that's what Paul found. And he's going to explain how he found the truth. Okay? Um, so just real quick, um, how many of you guys have seen Disney's Beauty and the Beast? Alright, so a lot of girls. I'm apparently the only guy that has daughters. Alright? Um, so Disney's Beauty and the Beast. So you're watching Disney's Beauty and the Beast, um, and it, it focuses on this portrait. I don't know if you're not talking about um, where the Beast has slashed the portrait, right? I mean, he, he did that because he, he didn't like the way he looked. Um, but if you notice when you watch the movie, all the mirrors in the house are broken. Um, and that really relates a lot to us today. Because what do we see when we look in the mirror? Like, a lot of us don't like it. Um, since 1991, the depression and suicide rate has consistently gone up. Okay, And why is that? Uh, students, especially today... Um, there's no way I could be in your shoes. Um, there's so much pressure, really, for all of us with the invention of social media. Um, we're constantly judging and being judged by what people put on there. Um, we feel this necessity to portray ourselves in such a way that we're going to find acceptance. Um, and it's just such a, such a strong pressure. Um, and I fully believe that that is why the suicide rates continue to climb. Um, because we allow people to give us our identity instead of looking to Christ for that. But Paul's going to give us the answer here of how he overcame that. Okay? So verse 7 says, But everything that was gained to me, so he's saying all that stuff I had, right? Everything that my pedigree... Okay? Everything that was gained to me, I have considered a loss because of Christ. He gave him up. He, he didn't care about any of that stuff. Um, he went from being a persecutor to being persecuted. Um, it, wasn't, 
it wasn't very long um, after Paul started his ministry that they're, they're lowering him out of a window so he doesn't get killed. Okay? Um, but more than that, I also consider everything to be a loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them filth. So not only has he turned away from him and turned aside from him, um, but he looks at it with disdain. He's saying, that's rubbish, that's garbage. I don't even care at all about that anymore. Um, that's, that's not who I am. And, and why is that? He's going to tell us. He says, so that I may gain Christ. Okay? And be found in him, not having righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. So, big, big church word you'll hear sometimes is justification, okay? Um, that's what Paul's talking about here. He is justified because of Christ, okay? Um, go on in verse 10. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, all right? So the next big church word, sanctification, right? So he's justified because of Christ, and now he's sanctified because of Christ's death. <clears throat> Assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead, right? So the final, the final word there is glorification, right? So you've got justification, sanctification, glorification. Um, glorification by being raised from the dead. So Paul's showing the value and the security of, of his identity being in Christ, right? Um, a lot of times in our life, we look at like what we have security in. Um, so when I left the fire department, um, I, I had 12 years in the fire department, um, just in fully invested into a pension. Um, everybody told me, like, you're, you're crazy for leaving this. <laughs> Why would you leave this? Um, like you're, you're doing a job that you absolutely cannot get fired from. Um, it's just incredibly difficult to get fired. Um, and you know, once you get your time, you're going to leave this job and make 75% of your salary for the rest of your life. Um, but you don't find retirements like that anymore. Um, so you're crazy for leaving that, right? And it's because it's the security of it, right? So Paul had security in being a Pharisee, right? He would have served on the Sanhedrin. Like he is like the elite of Judaism, um, but he left that. He says, I consider that garbage because of Christ. Um, I, can, I can be beaten. I can do all these things because of Christ. Um, I, I thought about when I, when I first opened where I was going to go to, um, Philippians. And uh, my wife jokingly said, you're not going to do 413? Um, I, I feel like um, Philippians 413 is a lot of graduates that they get to hear that. Um, but th that's what Paul's talking about here. When he's talking about Philippians 4, verse 13, um, that he can do all things through Christ. Like, this is why. Um, he's saying, I don't care about all that other stuff because I'm in Christ. Nothing else matters. If they kill me, great. I get to be with God. That's awesome. Um, so that's what he's saying here. So moving on, the next section there is, are we committed so verse 12 says, not that I have already reached the goal, or I am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it, because I also have been taken hold of by Christ. Um, and that's, that's a big difference there between his Pharisee training, right? Um, of them, them being so self-righteous, right? So Paul's really being humble here. Um, he said, nothing I did is not because of me. There's nothing I can do. Uh, it's all because of Christ. Um, and that's the same attitude that, that we have to have um, in life. That there's nothing that we have done or that we're going to do that we could have done without Christ. Um, verse 13. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue my goal, the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. 
So we have to forget um, about everything that we left behind. Because anything you left behind wasn't worth saving. Right? So Paul left all the security. But it wasn't worth it. Because in the end, if your focus is not on Christ, then like you have to stand before God. I mean, what are you going to say? Like, I collected all this stuff. He's going to say, great. I don't know you. Um, and that's what Paul's stressing here. That it, it doesn't matter. Um, that I, I have to press forward towards the goal, right? And this is, this is a term that the people of the day would have fully recognized, right? So you're talking about like, like Greeks, like Olympics, like just this thirst for competition, right? So they fully would have been like just on board with this, a race, right? So pursuing a goal. Um, and that's why Paul is using this vernacular that he's using um, just to, to, to make a point that, like I said, like nothing back here is worth looking, right? Um, so when you think of a runner, um, when a runner looks back, he loses time, right? There's a lot of races that have been lost because the runner looked back to see who was behind him. Right? It doesn't matter who's behind you. Like you have to focus on like the goal. So, verse 15, Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this also to you. So Paul's saying, examine yourself. Um, be sensitive to conviction. Right? I feel like a lot of times that our sensitivity to that conviction is, is lacking. Um, that God's yelling at us, uh, but we're so focused on these distractions um, and these people telling us what we are that we, we don't hear, right? Or, or maybe we do hear and we don't care, um, which is even worse. Um, so in any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Um, so once a standard has been set, it doesn't make any sense to go back, right? Um, just thinking about just like the modern car, right? Uh, like nobody wants to go back to like driving like a Model T. Like it would not make any sense. Like technology has advanced so far. Um, so one that the, the students can really relate to more is like a cell phone, right? Um, you've, you've probably heard this before, but like the first cell phone was like the size of this podium. Like you're, you're walking around, right? And then all you could do is make phone calls. Like that was it. And that was rotary, I think. Um, so now we've got this, you know, in our pocket, uh, a, a computer, right? So, like, the cell phone in your pocket is more advanced than the space shuttle they used to land on the moon. Like, how amazing is that, right? Um, like, who wants to go back to, like, this podium phone, right? That you got to carry in a backpack. Um, like, it, it's insane, right? So that's what Paul's saying. It doesn't make any sense. Um, in 1 Corinthians 13, he says that when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. I mean, that's, that's what we have to do. That's what we have to look at like Christianity as and our, our walk with Christ. That we have to put away these things. These things of the world, right? So all these things of the world are, are childish things, like in our walk. Um, as we, we grow and we mature spiritually, we, we have to put away these things that make us look back, that make us lose focus. But Paul goes on more than that, more than focusing on yourself, um, because it's not, it's not what our walk with Christ is. Um, so he's going to hit us hard here. He says, join in imitating me, brothers, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For I've often told you, and now say again with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. So this is a truth that breaks God's heart. I mean, it breaks, it breaks God's heart, but it breaks Paul's heart here, okay? So he's saying that there's lots of people that don't believe this. He's speaking to Jews, right? He's saying, if your brothers, they don't believe this. 
And it, it is literally like breaking me. Like I am crying over this. And you should be too. And so he goes on though. He says, their end is destruction. To put it plainly, they're going to hell. Their God is their stomach. They're ruled by their desires. Like how much does that speak to us today? Like they're ruled by their desires. Their glory is in their shame. And this is, speaks to American culture so well right now. Um, that they're proud of their sin. Um, there's, there's so many crazy things happening in the world now. And you think, how in the world like, have we gone like, so far like, off, off base? Um, and it's, it's because that our, our nation, it, it, we, are, we are not a, a God like, nation. Like, this is a godless nation. Um, this is not a Christian nation. Regardless of what you want to believe, this is not a Christian nation. Um, the majority of the people in this world want nothing to do with God. Um, they may think they do. Uh, they may think that they are Christian. Uh, the majority of people do believe they're going to heaven. But they base that on nothing, right? Uh, I mean, it would be no different than like, me saying that, I don't know, like, I'm going to like, nirvana. Like, it's, it's based off of nothing. Like, it's just... I'm just throwing that out there. Like, that's just like an idea I have. Um, I don't know why. And, and that's where they find themselves. They don't know why they're not going to heaven. So that's why Paul is broken here. Because he knows the truth. Um, so I'm going to continue on. It says, they focus on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait for a Savior. The Lord Jesus Christ. So he, what he's doing here is he's saying that this is them, and this is this is why we have hope because we're we're going to heaven, okay? Um, but we get we get so caught up in our daily distractions, um, and it's easy, right? Like we have we have busy busy lives. Um, I feel like they've never been more busy than they are today, uh, constantly being pulled and. So many different directions. Uh, but we have to come to a place, right? We have come to a place that we have to choose. We have to decide which way we're going to go. Okay? Um, so the same people that Paul's talking about in verse 18 and 19. Uh, these are people that are lost and going, going to hell. Okay? Um, and it's what Paul's broken over. But we have the greatest news, right? So just like Paul said, but this is our hope. Like, we're going to heaven, right? So we have, we have the greatest news in the world, and we just sit on it. Um, instead of telling people why there's hope in this identity in Christ, we focus on the identity that they want to put on us. Um, just these different things uh, that just so easily just allow us to fit into a mold. And why do we do that? We do it because it's easy. Um, we do it because we're not going to be persecuted. Um, and I use that term very, very loosely, I promise. Um, but we're not going to be made fun of because we're a teacher, right? But we might catch a little flack by saying, I'm a Christian, right? Um, we might get, you know, made fun of just a little bit by taking a stand. Uh, but we have to decide, right? So everybody in this room finds their identity in something. Um, I don't know what it is. I hope it's in Christ. Um, but what is it for yourself? Um, today you have to make that commitment uh, to be a disciple first, right? So do you want to be like Peter the fisherman? Or do you want to be Peter the disciple? Because that's two very different things. Um, that's, Peter the fisherman is the world deciding what we are. Peter the disciple is having that relationship with Christ. Following Christ so closely to say, if you kill me, it doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't care. I'm going to be with God. You are doing me a favor if you kill me. Like, the only thing I am here for is to tell people about Christ. 
That's it. Um, so just kind of to close it out, um, students, um, do you want to be a student that happens to be a Christian? Are you going to be a Christian that happens to be a student? Because just like Peter, there's, there's a major difference in the two. Um, and really, just eternity kind of weighs in the balance of those two. Um, if not for you, for a lot of other people that are affected by you. 